Unguided rockets in War Thunder comes in all shapes and sizes. The ones in this video is a mix of rockets that are from World War II and can be used against tanks. Some rockets are modeled after air-to-air -air rockets, others air-to-ground, and some rockets are air-launched towards shipping. But what they all have in common is that they can be used to kill tanks. So first I'm going to explain some about the reticle, and how to use it, and how to aim with the rockets in general. After that I'm going to take a look at some of the most commonly used rockets in War Thunder, and some rockets are used across different nations. Some nations rarely use rockets in the game, like for instance Japan and Germany, so I'll only use one rocket from each of those nations. The rockets in general either have high explosive warheads or armor piercing warheads, and I'll try to show a mix of both. Let's start off talking about the rocket reticle itself. The reticle will only appear when you have rockets equipped. And the reticle will disappear when all your rockets have been fired. As you can see, the reticle has a vertical center line and then equally spaced out four horizontal lines. Starting from the top, the horizontal lines represent 800 meters, then 600 meters, then 400 meters, and lastly 200 meters at the bottom. The width of the line represents a normal World War II tank's length. Now as mentioned, you can guesstimate the range to the tank with the width of the horizontal line. So the first one is 800 meters and I highlighted the width so you can see it. And you have to excuse the shaky cam because this is zoomed in. And once zoomed in it's not easy to uh, hold the plane as steady so sometimes I had issues with actually putting it in the middle. So, But I still think you get the idea. Next one is 600 meters and again it's not completely lined up but it still sort of fits. And this is 400 meters and it still looks okay. But as you can see at 200 meters it doesn't really work anymore. The horizontal line only represents about half the tank's width. So from 800 to 400 meters is still a pretty useful tool. Okay, now let's talk about the horizontal aim of the rockets. Almost all rockets in War Thunder are mounted underneath the wings. And nearly all of them are fired in pairs, so you fire both from the left and the right wing. Very few rockets are fired individually. The mostly the bigger specialized rockets, but we'll come to that later. Very few rockets can be fired from a great distance, and then you can use the top horizontal line. And we're using that one, you pretty much just need to aim directly at the center of the target with the line. At 800 meters, most rockets will almost hit the center of the target. But when you're using the rockets much closer, the spread is going to be larger. Which pretty much means that you're only aiming and using and hitting with one of the rockets. So you need to decide whether you want to aim with the right wing rocket or the left wing rocket. I just suggest you pick a side and just stick with it. So your aim should be at the very tip of the line on the either 200, 400 or 600 meter line. So place the center of your target on the very tip of one of those lines. Okay, so what did we just see? 
We saw the H5 rocket below with a speed of 420 meters a second and a weight of 64 kilograms. And on the top the M8 rocket, speed 260 meters a second with a weight of 17 kilograms. I tried to fire them both at around 800 meters. Now the H5 rocket reached the target faster and I didn't score a kill but I actually got a hit with splash damage. While with the M8 rocket it got there much slower and it landed about 15 to 20 meters short of the tank. All this means that the speed of the rocket is actually very important, whether you're going to land a hit or if you're going to miss the target. And there are many pros with the faster speed of the rocket. First off, and the most important thing in a way, the flatter trajectory means, or you can call it flight path, is pretty much the same. Anyhow, it's going to be easier to aim and you can reach targets further out. It also reaches the target a little faster. And if you're trying to lead a moving target, it also requires less lead that way. And it also means that you can shoot at it from a further distance, which means you can disengage faster again. Which again means that it increases your own survivability. And the cons can be summed up with gravity is a bitch. So flying at the correct height, well correct in quotation, uh, when you attack actually has some pros and cons. Now I suggest like 3 to 500 meters when you approach and then dive towards the target. Now the pros for something like that is of course that you have good visibility around you and you can see the target from a greater distance and of course the major con is that every single SPAGs will also be able to see you and multiple enemies around the map will be able to see you from that height. But I'll still take my chances from a higher altitude so I can spot my target easily and find them faster than instead of having to fly over the treetops and really only being able to see a couple of hundred meters in front of you. But of course it will probably increase your survivability. Let's take a look at some armor values. This is the popular F2 Panzer IV. The sides are 30 mm thick, so is the turret. Top of the hull is 11 mm thick. Engine 10 mm thick, and the top of the turret also is 10 mm thick. Let's bump it up to 6.7 with the Jagd Tiger. Sides are 80 mm thick. Top of the hull 50 mm. And the top of the casemate itself is 45 mm thick. Back over the engine is 30 mm thick. Now let's try to look at the rocket that's going to try to defeat it. The RP3 has a max armor penetration at 10 meters of 60 mm. One thing to remember is of course, the more angled armor you attack, the less penetration. So here, 0 degrees, 60 millimeters of penetration, dropping down to 52 millimeters at 30 degrees, and dropping down again to 44 millimeters of penetration at 60 degrees. Now the reason I'm saying this is like a rocket, like the British RP-3. You can find that one already at 1.0 and you can find it all the way down to I haven't even researched this one yet 8.3 so we are talking about what five ranks of uh, armor in War Thunder and since this is a game where rockets don't magically get stronger whenever it fights stronger armor, you're going to run into issues where the rocket simply cannot defeat the armor it's up against from the side at least. And that is why we're going to talk about top-down attack now. So there's a couple of things to remember. And that is which type of aircraft you're attacking with, 
and and what angle you're diving towards the target with and how fast you're going. Some aircraft like the American P-47 or this Tempest, they are pretty heavy which also means once you start diving if you still have full throttle on you can get some pretty damn crazy diving speeds going on which also means you're going to have issues by pulling out again from the attack if you're not careful. So if you happen to use a plane which really picks up a lot of diving speed be very careful, so you need to start diving from a higher altitude or cut the throttle, or both. So I'm going to show you three different diving angles and three different aim points, which I suggest you can use in order to hit the target. There are going to be a little bit of difference with how you aim the rockets depending on how fast they are, but the steeper angle you attack from, the less difference there is. I think this is the steepest diving angle I can use. I'm a thousand meters up and I have to cut throttle just because the diving speed is going to be insane otherwise and still I don't really have a lot of time to make my uh, precise aim and then pull out again before it's too late. And this is the exact frame and moment I released the rocket. As you can see I'm using the very top bar on the rocket reticle to aim and I'm using the right wing rocket that's why I'm aiming with the right side of the reticle. And another quick note as you can see I lost 600 meters of altitude just with that maneuver. So even from 1000 meters up I was cutting it close. And I scored a perfect hit that went right down through the commander's cupola. Now I am 700 meters up and I have reduced the diamond angle some. And now you can see the reduced diamond angle also means that my point of aim is different. So now I'm using the reticle 600 meter marker. Still using the right side of the reticle to keep it consistent. And last example, 400 meters up and a very shallow dive. And lastly, it's still a dive but it's so shallow that I'm using the reticles 400 meter side. And that's pretty much what I would have used otherwise. Another way of using these rockets is of course the ground hogging way where you need to get very close up and personal if you really want to make sure to get that revenge kill. Point of aim should be the lowest horizontal line on the reticle. And since you're getting so close now, the position of the rocket on the wing is also important for your aim. Since all these rockets are unguided, there has to be some kind of inaccuracy built in and the game has spilled it into the in form of some RNG and it looks like this. Not all players know this, but there's actually a way you can get rid of some of the RNG element. And that's with a crew skill. First select your crew, then logistical services, and then pick web maintenance. Now this skill affects guns, bombs and rockets, but let me just read out the entire text. Reduces the overheating speed of the primary weapons as well as spread of bombs and rockets for aircraft. Reduces the chance of weapon jamming due to overheating by up to three times. Reduces the angular velocity of bombs, rockets and torpedoes by up to three times, thereby significantly improving the accuracy. So if you max out your crew, and qualify your crew up to ace, you have pretty much eliminated all the RNG there is in the game and thereby greatly increase the accuracy of your guns, rockets and bombs. If you don't want to spend silver lying on qualification, you should at the very least max this one out of the crew points. 
So reduce your frustrations with the game some and your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or cat or dog or drywall will definitely appreciate it. Here be the Russians. Here we have the RS and RBS family of rockets. On the left we have the RS family with two rockets. They are both high explosive. The first one, 82, stands for the diameter of 82 mm and 132, 132 mm. Weight, huge difference, 8 and 43 kilograms. Speed, 320 and 355 meters a second. TNT, 0 0.36 kilograms and 4.9 kilograms. So big difference there as well. And also armor pin, 10 mm, which is pretty much nothing and 40 millimeters. So the first rocket RS-82 I would argue is pretty much useless, don't even bother about it. The RS-132 is pretty good actually. Um, you have a little higher speed than the, than the little brother actually, much bigger explosive mass and the penetration is also decent. And I'm going to show you how even a near miss or actually a far miss will still produce a kill on a soft skin vehicle like an SPAG. On the right side we have the RBS-82 and the RBS-132. Weight 15 and 51 kilograms. Speed 360 and 335 meters a second. TNT 480 grams and 1.35 kilograms. Armor pin 60 and 85 millimeters. So the RBS ones are the ones with the armor piercing warhead. And you can see very little TNT, but again, they have armor piercing capabilities. As you can see, 60 millimeters and 85 millimeters. And the RBS 132 with the 85 millimeters of armor pin, that thing can even penetrate a King Tiger or Tiger 2 from the side. Just remember that it being armor piercing also means they have very little post pin damage. I mean the 480 grams of TNT in the little one is enough to kill a small tank like the lower tier tanks but it's probably going to struggle with having enough post pin damage to one shot a higher tier tank. So first up we have the RS-132 with the 4.9 kilograms of TNT warhead. I will say that with this rocket at a speed of 355 meters a second don't bother, and that's actually rockets in general, don't bother about hitting targets further out than about 600 meters tops, I would say. Leave the further distance out to the even faster rockets. And... Look at that. Completely overwhelmed it, and actually a pretty damn big explosion to boot. And we ripped off the turret of that poor Panzer III. But again, the turret only has... Um, what is it? 30 millimeters of armor so definitely overkill and now I'm going to try to show you what I'm talking about a near miss and actually far miss and still getting a kill on the soft skin vehicle I'm hitting off target on purpose and there we go it was still enough to kill it and let me just uh, double back so I can show you again And as you can see, I would say that's about what 10 meters, maybe even a little more away from the soft skin vehicle. And those 4.9 kilograms of TNT was enough to uh, kill it. And here we have the RBS 82. So that's the smaller rocket with the armor piercing warhead. This is the one with the 48, uh, 480 grams of TNT. Yep. Turret hit. Now with the turret hit or center hit, those 480 grams is enough to one shot it. But if I had hit, let's like, say, either the driver area or the engine compartment, that might not have been enough to uh, actually kill it. You would still get a mobility kill and then could come back and finish him off or let a teammate do it. 
but it's just something to keep in mind. And now I'm going to see if I can uh, hit the engine compartment of this uh, truck. Uh, just to make a point about the 480 grams is not enough to actually score a kill. I know it's a bigger vehicle and a lot of dead space, but still. Oh, there we go. Yep, see? Didn't kill it. So, th that's to show that you can have issues with not being able to one-shot it, even a soft skin vehicle. Here we have the HVAR rocket, also called Holy Moses, and HVAR stands for High Velocity Aircraft Rocket. Country, United States, which means of course that other nations which also have American aircraft also get access to this rocket. Weight, 64 kilograms. Speed, a very nice 420 meters a second. TNT, 3.4 kilograms. And armor pin at 10 meters, 36 millimeters. Now the armor pin with 36 millimeters is not the greatest. What makes it a good rocket though is of course the pretty high speed, 420 meters a second. So you have a flatter trajectory, it's going to be a little easier to aim with and you can uh, reach targets and touch them further out in a very inappropriate manner. So HVAR 420 meters a second and 3.4 kilograms of TNT. Now I'm stopping here real quick to show you this. Again this is the exact second and frame I released the rockets and I wanted to try 800 meters but it turns out to be more like 730 meters. But again I want to show you the much flatter trajectory and it's no problem reaching targets out like this just uh, directly pointing at them. If I had used a much slower rocket in the 300 or even lower meters a second range I would have had to raise the reticle in order to compensate for the increased drop of the slower moving rocket. And you can only do that if you've done this plenty of times so over and over and over again. So you can kind of gauge really fast where to aim the slower moving rocket. So again, um, the faster the rocket is, the easier it is to aim and the faster you can get the shot off. Now the increased weight of the rocket with 64 kilograms of course also means that you have a bigger explosive mass, 3.4 kilograms. So that also means that you can hit an SPAG nearly anywhere and uh, one hit should uh, almost definitely score kill. The next 32 seconds is pure misery of me almost hitting or rather getting a splash hit 98% of the time on 7 or 800 meters with the H bar. But try to look how close I got and then the final result. I think there was one or two rockets that didn't get a splash damage on, but that was about it. So speed is death. In a good way. And I know I didn't get a kill, but it just proves my point. So this rocket is definitely a nice one to have. And of course the RNG plays in here. You saw how many times I got a near miss, so you can see how close I actually got on 800 meters. Or 700. This is actually pretty impressive for unguarded rocket. This is the M8 rocket country, United States, and again, if you have American aircraft in other trees, like for instance the French ones, you might also get access to this one. You get access to it very early in the game, and it should really stay that way. Weight, 17 kilograms. Speed, a measly 260 meters a second. 
TNT 1.95 kilograms and armor pen almost non-existent with 24 millimeters. So this being so slow and lightweight, I wouldn't worry about using it further out at maximum 4 or 500 meters. And as you can see, I hit the driver's compartment and I gave him a boo-boo, but that's about it. It is however the first American rock you get access to, so you might as well use it. Just don't expect miracles with that one, but it's still better than the Russian RS-82. A second low center hit killed the rest of the crew and I scored a kill. But as you can see it did not do much post pin damage and I'm even surprised it got through the armor. So hit the roof of the truck and as you can see everything turned orange but nothing was red and even I had 2 kilograms of TNT wasn't enough to score a kill but at least I started a fire and it should just burn down. Ta -da! This is WFR GR21 or Werfergranate 21, which I guess means throwing grenade 21 actually. Country Germany, weight 110 kilograms, speed 320 meters a second, TNT 10 kilograms, armor pin 62 millimeters at 10 meters. Do you see something odd here? Let me give you a couple of seconds. Yeah, so the rocket reticle is above the main aim side and this rocket is the only one that uses a site like this. The reason for this is that this rocket is meant to be used against bombers and you are supposed to attack the bombers from below and even the rocket launch tubes are angled upwards. And as you can see if I can get this camera angled right they are angled slightly upwards in order to facilitate that you can hit the bombers above you, or at a slight angle above you anyhow. So yeah, those Germans definitely creative. So, Wurfgranate 21. Now the biggest issue with this one is of course that the reticle being up there also means that you need to dive like crazy in order to actually use the reticle for anything useful. That also means that you need to be pretty high up, like 4 or 500 meters, in order to actually use the damn thing. Because you need to use it in a dive only, otherwise you can forget about it. And I don't think a lot of players are using this, because it's pretty annoying to uh, aim with this way. It's actually pretty sad, since this is the only uh, rocket that the Germans get access to that has any effect on ground targets, really. But once you land a hit, um, I mean, you can argue with the effect. 10 kilograms of TNT and 62 millimeters of arm pin is plenty. So the rocket itself and the effect is just fine, but the usage is just very annoying. And I'm pretty sure a lot of players don't even want to bother with it. I mean, I must admit, I rarely use it myself just because of how cumbersome it is to use. So this is one of the times where I wish that Gaijin didn't have uh, incorporated this kind of uh, historical accuracy in it and just uh, left it like any other normal uh, rocket reticle because, uh, yeah, annoying.
Here we have type 5, number 6, mod 9, country Japan, weight 84 kilograms, speed 230 meters a second, TNT 10 kilograms, and armor pin at 10 meters, 62 millimeters. The Japanese are not as bad off as the Germans, but it's pretty damn close. You have access to a total of 4 rockets, and only a very few aircraft can even use them. But I would say that only one is really useful, and that's the one I have equipped right now. So this plane, which sits at 5.3, is the lowest BR rating plane that can use it. The rocket itself is very slow moving, with only 230 meters a second. However, the armor piercing warhead has 10 kilograms of TNT, and that is pretty good, with an armor penetration of 62 millimeters. And unlike the sad German, this Japanese rocket is aimed normally with a normal rocket reticle. For some reason there are no targets I can really attack, no baddies anyways, on this uh, test range, so I'm just gonna attack my own fleet I guess. Now with the rocket moving this slow, I wouldn't suggest you attack anything further out than 5 or 600 meters also. But once you hit a tank, and even a very close near miss is enough to uh, kill an even higher level tank, so the rocket itself is very useful. Unfortunately, you can only carry two of these, and that goes for all the Japanese rockets, even the smaller ones. So only two per plane, and I don't really get that, it does make sense. Some of the very uh, small Japanese rockets are only 10 kilograms, so and you should easily be able to carry at least four under each wing, but you just can't. So, as a result, I'm going to show my discontent and just attack my own carrier. NANI?! Here we have Tiny Tim, which is kind of ridiculous, but fun name. Country USA and all other nations that can use American aircraft. Weight 534 kilograms, speed 274 meters per second, TNT or whopping 67 kilograms, and armor pin also whopping 93 millimeters. First off, I'll uh, start with a fun fact. So these rockets don't ignite off a rail, but they actually drop like a bomb for a second, then they ignite. So the reason for this is because of the rocket engine. Apparently it was so uh, ferocious that the plane took damage if it would have been fired off the wing right away. So it needs to be dropped first and then a lanyard was connected to the bomb and when that snapped it ignited the engine. And if you can see in game, it actually works exactly like that. So Tiny Tim is a big boy and he has definitely uh, looked into Mama's cook jaw or TNT jaw for that matter. With 534 kilograms he is one of the heaviest rockets you can use and also the warhead is one of the largest with 67 kilograms. One of the penalties is of course a very slow flight speed with only 274 meters a second. One of the bigger negatives of this guy is how heavy he is. So you can clearly feel it whenever you're flying with them. So as soon as you can, get rid of them, especially if you see a plane approaches an RB and you have to dogfight. Then get rid of them right away, otherwise you're a sitting dog. On the plus side, even a near miss will actually kill a tank. And if they're lumped together, you can score multiple kills with one hit, especially in the lower ranks where they have thin armor. And another important thing, you always fire the left rocket first. And I know that they are under the plane's body itself, but it still is important that you're using the left side of the reticle first, and then the right side. And as you can see, I didn't physically hit, but it was still a near miss. And uh, that was enough to completely go up the tank. I really like the game's sound design, you can really hear the thump of the explosion. So for this little demonstration, I'll try to show you how effective that uh, 67 kilograms of TNT is. So I'm not gonna aim for the truck, but I'm gonna hit pretty far away and let's see what happens. 
Okay, that was insane. That was like 50 meters away from it or something like that, and yet it still managed to uh, blow it up. Let's try a double back and take a look at it again. And imagine that has been a bunch of SPAGs at their spawn or some light tanks. Try look at that. That was crazy. Now we can use these rockets also for long range attacks but you really need to uh, adjust your aim because they're slow moving and you need uh, a pretty decent height in order to do so. So these hits I got from a kilometer away. As you can see it's definitely possible and I'm using the very lowest horizontal line in order to aim with to uh, score that killer that distance. It's actually pretty fun to play around with, but it takes some uh, trial and error to figure out where to aim and how high you need to be in order to uh, do something like this. So I've been saving my new favorite rocket for the very last. This is the Triplex RP rocket. Country Britain, weight 136 kilograms, speed 245 meters a second, TNT 12.7 kilograms, and armor pin 66 millimeters. So this looks like they have taken three RP3 rocket engines and strapped them together and then put a big old warhead in front of it. And in game it works surprisingly well. Now there's only a single plane in the game, as far as I know, that can use this uh, rocket. And that is the British Sea Fury FB-11. The British plane has a BR rating of 5.3. As you can see, the Sea Fury is mainly an aircraft carrier born plane. And I guess that is also part of why the rocket is so specialized. Because like the Uncle Tom rocket, this triplex RP is meant to kill ships mainly. And I'm guessing that this plane has some specialized launching equipment since uh, this is the only one in game that can actually use this rocket. Now I had not researched the plane prior to this video, so I didn't even know the rocket existed. But I got a very nice comment on YouTube. So Swart asked me, could you make a guide to triplex RP rockets? I spent a while getting Sea Fury and despite its amazing airplane, I can't aim these rockets to any effect. So Swart, this is for you and me and anybody else who wants to get to know these pretty amazing rockets. I will start off by saying something seems a little off though. Because as you saw, the rocket only has a speed of 260 meters a second. But once you see them fired, they have a very flat trajectory, pretty much like the HVAR. And it is an excellent rocket and it can reach targets out to 800 or probably even a kilometer. But I suppose this is where the three RP rocket engines strapped together comes in play. So even though it doesn't in a way make sense, since of course three rockets could push out a warhead even further, a heavier one, but it shouldn't affect the flat trajectory like it does. So that part is a little weird, but I'm not complaining. As you can see, I'm aiming for 800 meter hit and perfect hit. And here you can clearly see the very flat trajectory, just like the HVAR. It's an excellent rocket and easy to use. There is one thing however though. This rocket is probably easier to use at 800 and 600 meters. When you start to get down to let's say 400 and 200 meters, it tends to overshoot because of the flat trajectory, it can kind of trick you. So if you use a close in, you need to aim much lower than you would think normally. And this is the other way to use the 12.7 kilograms of freedom. Even a near miss results in a kill. And I could probably have missed the truck with several meters more and still scored a kill. Okay, 
So let's try to do a 600 meter shot just for shits and girls. Hello, RNG. My old friend. Yeah, that happened. Let's try that again. There we go, much better. Okay, that was it for this video. So do me a favor and please give it a like, comment if you want to, or even go overboard and subscribe to my little channel. I had a lot of fun making this video and I learned a bunch, and maybe you did too. Until next time, have a good one.